what stage of lockdown I'm in. This is actually, this actually happened today. I, um, I woke up this morning, I've got a puppy at the moment and she, she started like crying or like knocking at her, do- uh, her this morning and like knocking at the door kind of thing. And I was like, okay, she's, um, she needs to get up. And I thought it was six or 7 a.m. in the morning. So I kind of thought I'll get up today. And I went out into the kitchen. I made breakfast. I made a coffee. I let her out. And then my wife walked into the kitchen and went, what are you doing? And I was like, what do you mean, what am I doing? She's like, it's 1 a.m. <laughs> and I just woke up. <laughs> and I lit- she just needed a wee in the middle of the night. And I literally sat there with cereal at 1 a.m. And I just went, oh, shit. And I just went straight back to bed. So that's where I am at the moment. <laughs> I thought you were going to say 1 p.m. 1 a.m. is so, so much better. 1 a.m. So yeah, I'd only, I only went to bed at midnight, so I'd been in bed for an hour. And anyway, so um, yeah, so I'm losing my mind slowly. But uh, anyway, <laughs> let's get on to the movie. Perfect segue into Relic, really. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I loved Relic. I thought it was such a brilliant piece of filmmaking. It was so, it's one of those movies I kind of admire so much because of its m- amount of kind of layers that. I almost can't think about it too much because it overwhelms me at how kind of intelligent and brilliant it is. Um, I just wondered when you first got the screenplay, if, if the, the points that, were, that Natty was trying to sort of convey and the kind of themes and stuff, if they came to you quite quickly, if it was quite a, a slow burning kind of experience for you. It's funny because the first time I read the script, I mean, maybe I was, I, I, I feel like I was more swept up in the supernatural aspect of it. Like the first time I finished the script, I, I almost wasn't certain that it was just a, a kind of metaphor for Alzheimer's and that the labyrinth wasn't like a real supernatural element of the house. Uh, but as far as the rest of the theme, I don't know. I just couldn't stop thinking about it. I couldn't stop thinking about it. Like for days, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I couldn't stop talking about it. I was dreaming about it. Like I was kind of obsessed with it from the first time I read it. And it just felt like, I can't believe, like I read it and thought, how was no one made this film yet like how has no one made a film a horror film about alzheimer's yet it kind of, it really blew me away um and i just i don't know anything that's like about grief or mother daughter dynamics is already like i'm you know sign me up because it's so um taps into my own trauma i guess yeah because i mean it is it does feel like a film about grief doesn't it i mean because i was watching a documentary um recently called dick johnson is dead on netflix which is about a oh a documentarian and she's doc- sort of it's, it's almost a film a documentary about her own grief about her dad who's got dementia but he's still alive and it's almost like she's kind of coming to terms with it while he's there and I felt that this film in some ways despite the fact that all three members of the family were in that house it does feel like a film about loss in some ways. No yeah definitely I mean that's what struck me most about it uh, and the idea of like grieving someone who's still there is just so brutal um i've certainly seen people that are you know like i have a a close friend's wife is suffering from alzheimer's and she's pretty hers is pretty advanced and watching them like you know they've had a a 30-year marriage they've loved and known each other their whole lives and to be with someone to love someone who doesn't know who you are is just i mean horrific and I mean, I guess there's always a sense on movie sets uh, of like learning from people who are kind of more experienced than you when you're being when you're around on set with people who have kind of been there and done it. I guess it's kind of hard not to subconsciously watch them and pick up from them. But in this movie, when you're very much the kind of youngest of the trio, did, did it was it was it almost go from being subconscious to being just a conscious attempt just to, to watch those two brilliant actresses and, and take and sort of learn from their from their work? I mean... I suppose so. I don't know how conscious it was. I definitely talked to Emily and Robin about it a lot. Um, and what, yeah, I did. I watched them work and watched their process. It was also watching Natalie because she was the youngest of all of us, you know? So I think at the start I was so <sighs> quietly wary or something. I remember someone telling me once, you know, if you ever want to know if you can trust a director, watch the directions they give to the other actors and watch if that next take is better or worse than the take before. And I'd watch her give these two, like Robin and Emily, like extraordinary actors who were already extraordinary and she'd give them a note and they would be, they would be even better or different, totally different, but just as good. And um, I feel like I was watching 
Natalie almost more than I was watching the other actors. I was just so blown away by how she carried herself on set and how she managed to get like everything she wanted in just the most, I don't know, she was, unlike any director I've ever worked with, you know, she seemed so kind of quiet and meek almost. I thought, how's this going to work? And then she was just phenomenal. Mm. Yeah, I mean, to say an exciting future lies ahead almost seems like an understatement. As, a, as debuts go, this is quite something, isn't it? I mean, I know obviously you've been, you've been in the industry and on film sets and stuff, and she's, she feels like one of the most kind of, just based on this one project, one of the most kind of exciting voices already in, in world cinema. Oh, totally. I'm going to be like begging her for work for years to come on. Like, oh, no, you know, I heard that you're doing it. Oh, right, you've cast blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool, cool. Just, you know, if you ever need any like small parts filled or background PA work on set, you know, I'm totally going to be stalking her for the rest of my career, I imagine. And obviously, as, I'm, as a, I'm a West Londoner, so very proud of Emily because she's she grew up just near where I grew up. So I'm so yeah, yeah, I'm really proud of her. Like I'm sort of connected in any way. This is me just hanging off the coattails of her success. But <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, but she's she's brilliant as well. I mean, what was she like to work with on this project? She's an absolute dream. I'm obsessed with her. Like I love her. I've stayed in her house since. Like we visited. She's visited me in LA. I visited her in New York. I love her. I love her family. I love everything about her. Watching her on set, like she's so good. How she managed to do an Australian accent is completely beyond me. No one else can do that. So um, yeah, I, I I couldn't speak highly enough of Emily like I just want basically want to be her when I grow up it must be quite nice watching people give the Australian accent a go because usually a lot of Australian actresses have to give American and English accents a go so it must be quite nice to go yeah now it's your turn to to try yeah it was a little bit I gotta say there's some perverse part of me that was into it it also felt so strange to be acting in an Australian accent myself because I hadn't done that in like almost 10 years I felt a bit naked or something like I didn't have my um accent costume on or something yeah. uh, was it when you watched the movie back because obviously despite the fact it is a very much a profound kind of a, a family kind of drama it is it does play up to the tropes obviously of the kind of haunted house and sort of like a tr mm. the traditional kind of archetypal horror movies I just wondered if you get quite scared watching it back or is that quite hard when you're one of the leading roles in it I think I was more scared in it when we were shooting it than I was watching it back. Although there are those like jump scare moments that get me definitely. Um, and that when the other is coming after us in the labyrinth and comes around the corner and like up the stairs, like I've seen that like three times and it still just freaks me the F out, like really gets me every time. So yeah, I mean, I've just totally contradicted myself. Yes, it scared me. It scared me doing it and it scared me watching it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you mentioned before about Emily visits you in LA. Is that, is that where you're based usually in LA? That... Yes, when there's not a, you know, global pandemic. Um, yeah, I was in LA from 2010 until this year. Yeah. So, because I was wondering, how's it been this kind of year back back home? Because, because I mean, I, it's, it's been a kind of, I've spoken to so many kind of actors and actresses over the past few months, so it's been a mixed bag. Some people have really enjoyed this kind of time, because I guess with your work, you travel so much that they've really enjoyed mm. kind of a few months just not having to roam around all the time but then some people are finding it quite creatively kind of stifling I was wondering what your sort of how your experience has been this year my first thought was like okay so he spoke to those actors a few months ago so they were still just a few months in so they were still in that sweet spot when you're like oh it's so lovely to be at home and like spend time with my husband and and now I'm really at the point where I'm, I'm just ready to work actually maybe I've come around again to like okay I'm not I'm just retired now I'm not even an actor anymore but um I have, you know, there has been so many extraordinary things that have happened. You know, like my, I was spending more time with my father, being in the same country as him, and even my brother, because his work, he's in London, um, but obviously his work's been different this year. So, like, being able to connect as a family more, like, all those moments have been really special. But um, I started writing a script, which I just thought I'd never do, uh, and I would not have done had it not been for this. So there have been things that have come out of this that have been great, but I'm so just get me back on a set. Yeah, I know. It's I, I think I'm the same. There was a kind of sense of novelty in the start when I was like, oh, I don't have to go anywhere or see anyone. I quite like this kind of lack of pressure. And mm -hmm. now I'm just I, if I see scenes in movies of like crowds, I just get so upset because I just want it back so bad. Yeah, um, yeah. But um, yeah, because I was wondering, because um, yeah, because I spoke because I at the beginning of lockdown, I thought to myself I was going to um, learn French and learn the piano. 
and I haven't even, yeah. I don't even own a piano. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how to say my name in French. So I've not yeah. achieved my goals, but you've written a, sounds like, have you finished this script that you write in? No, I'm, I'm, how many pages in am I? I'm, I think I'm two thirds of the way through. Um, so I did that, I did pottery classes at the start. I did a bunch of like online pottery, I got a pottery kit. What else did I do? I was like drawing, I did drawing classes because that was also for my next role. I was like, okay, I'm gonna master drawing. And then I think I kind of hit a wall and then it's just been like, I'm proud if I go to the supermarket and go for a walk and, you know, donate toast for three meals a day. Um, may, may, I think maybe like now I'm kind of getting back into like, okay, I'm going to be more productive again. There's nothing wrong with eating toast three times a day. I know. No, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If you put different things on top of it, it can be very nice. I know, I know. Like yeah. avocado, you know, you can like jam, you've got like sweet, savoury options, breakfast, lunch options, totally. Um, but obviously one of the things you have got coming up, according to the internet, is Pieces of Her with Tony Collette. Is that, what, what stage is that? Because I know it's obviously upcoming, but is it, has there been, was it one of those projects that was halted halfway through because of COVID or had it not started yet? What, what stage is that at the moment? We were going to start shooting on Monday, March whatever it was. And Friday was like when every production got the call, you know, um, that like the whole world was shutting down. And I remember hanging around Vancouver that weekend, just being like, oh, I'm just going to see how this pans out. And everyone else left. And then Monday it was kind of like the borders are closing and I just jumped on a plane. So we were close, but not in there yet. Is that, is that, do you know if that's going to, has that got the conversations about resuming soon? Cause it looks like such a brilliant thing that I can't wait to, to see. Yeah. It definitely does. I think they're just trying to figure out where where to do it, where's safe and where they can get everyone and um, all that jazz. But it definitely feels like God bless Netflix. Like it feels like it's it's still very much happening or at least possible. Yeah. So my final question really was about just going to go back to Relic. I mean, what's it been like to have a kind of release of something you're, this year? Because I guess usually, I mean, we'd be doing this probably in person in London. And yeah. I guess there's, and in some ways, it's great to kind of, the, the festival circuit is great because I think people sort of move and travel and see, meet loads of people and audiences, yeah. Q and A's. But so what's it been like to kind of replicate that experience, which I'm sure you've done before, to kind of having it out in the world, but you're very kind of removed from it in some ways. Has it been quite strange? It has been. It has been also like just really on a very purely selfish note. My brother lives in London and I, and I haven't seen my nephew all year. And I was just like, okay, great. Like, it would have been so good to be in London um, for Relic, but I don't know. I'm just glad that it came out at all, you know, that people are seeing it. There's also, because it, it has such a streamed life, um, you know, there's some weird part of me that's like, great, people are trapped at home and can watch, can watch the movie. But it is, it's funny, like, you know, like, okay, I've got press, like, what am I going to wear? I'm going to set up my lighting and jump in my cupboard and do a, a junket or something. Um, yeah, it's it's strange. Well, you got a good backdrop. It's like a kind of that like mustard yellow. That, I, I'm quite happy for that. These are cupboards. These are cupboards. There's towels in there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, um, anyway, I've just hit my time. I, I, to be honest with you, I was about to say I don't, I'm going to go back to, to work and just realise that I woke up at 1 a.m. today and had breakfast. So I might <laughs> just go, I don't, I'm going to have my dinner now, I think. Yeah. It's 9 a.m. It's time for dinner. So, um, but, but no, thank you so much. And best of luck with the movie. I think it is honestly such a great film and I can't wait for it to come out over here. And I'm urging all my friends and family to give it a go this weekend. So awesome. Yeah. Thank you hopefully, so much. Yeah, and best have a nice rest of, rest of your day. And hopefully we'll, next time interviews like this happen, they will be in London. Who knows? Cool. Fingers crossed. All right. all right, take care, Bella. Bye-bye. Thanks, bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!